trail She is one black rat Some day I'll find the trail Some day I'll find the trail But I might end up in jail Well, I saw you last night And the other night before Hi, I'm Joe Hodge from Music Nation and I'm interviewing the Recliner Rockers, Jeff and Al. Oh, guys, how long have you guys been in the music scene? Well, we've been in the music scene uh, individually for a long time. Um, Al, a little bit longer than me. Um, when I was a teenager, I used to try and get into the pub to see Alan's band, um, uh, what were you called, uh, the Sly Groovers. They were like one of the, the blues bands around. And um, Alan was a big... Um, a big influence on me and, and other musicians my age, so um, it was it was a bit of a, a bit of a buzz when uh, eventually um, Alan and I met up and we discovered that we both had a, a liking for rockabilly, and um, yeah, that's that's a really awesome story. So he was actually like a, it is an influence in your progression towards music. Yeah, cool, cool. So how did you guys meet? Where did you meet? Uh, I met Jeff. Um, I was working in a music shop, and he used to come and in, come into the music shop and um, bother us all. You know, um, I, I was trying to steal the, so the guitar picks, but he caught me. <laughs> uh, so, in addition <laughs> to coming along to our gigs, he'd also turn up at the music shop where I worked. Um, I got to know him then. He uh, looked a lot different. He, uh, first time I saw him, I think he had a mohawk. <laughs> it stood about this high and went all the way down his back. It was very punky. Um, but uh, we'd stayed in touch over the years, but we actually came together in this sort of, with the idea of putting something together when we backed a mutual friend up in her band. She put a glam band together and we, Jeff came in on bass and I came in on guitar, but after the gigs we started talking about things like influences and what we like playing. Rockabilly was definitely a, a big um, influence and a big interest for us, so that's how the Recliner Rockers came about. That's cool, that's cool. And hey, um... Have you guys had any members that have left your band? Uh, drummers, yeah, we've had a few drummers. Um, at the moment, drummers. Drummer, drummers and drummers. Um, yeah, we've had uh, some very good drummers play with us, and we still have a very good drummer playing with us, um, Julian Davis. He's not here at the moment because he's had foot surgery, but he's coming back to do the gig. Um, we've had, uh, who have we had? Pat Coots, we've had... Um, uh, we've had... Dan Clayton, we've had Glenn Chuck, we've had like pretty much had our pick of the best drummers around. That's cool. But it's, it's always been. We actually had Pat Coots though, didn't we? We had Pat Coots play with us. Yeah, he's played with us. Yeah. Wow. No, not as our uh, corrections, <laughs> not as our full time. Um, but um, Alan and I have been in it since the start. Uh, also, we have a sax player, Bruce French, who's at the moment on tour with, um, uh, with the. What, what's the show he's doing? The, <laughs> it's some big show that's like touring all over the country. It's like the um, uh, Glenn Miller story or something like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. Cool. And speaking of tours, have you guys done any tours yourselves? Um, up and down the country quite a lot. We play from uh, Invercargill, uh, Hokitika, where we're at in a couple of weeks. Um, I think the furthest north we've been is uh, Kaikoui. Um, Oh yeah, yeah, just all over New Zealand, really. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And what's sort of an ideal event for you? Is it sort of an outdoor summer feeling, or do you, just anything um, goes? Festivals, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, ones where people have come together to have a good time. We're, we're um, a visual band as well as a a. Um, a visual band when you when you say visual as in you're looking at the crowd and how they respond to you and what you're doing, or uh, visual as well, in. Well, it's an actual performance. And yeah. We, we actually like to get out into the crowd. And, Jeff gets out there and throws his bass around and uh, um, I get out in the crowd. We're wireless, so we can get out and do that. But it's, it's, a, but it's a spontaneous part of what we do. It's not contrived. Um, we just started doing it naturally as a way of relieving... Um, frustrations. Not frustrations, <laughs> yeah. Not monotony, but a way of making things a little more interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, mm. you know, involving the crowd. So a festival, you know, um, 
Yeah, so things where we don't have to play for too long is probably our best. Eh? We just do a short, sharp set and, and give it everything. But, uh, I mean, Alan's he, he's just a natural performer. He plays with his teeth, he plays behind his head, wow. he plays with his feet. plays with pretty much every part of his body apart from his hands, really. Without, without getting too great. I won't ask any further than that. <laughs> I, I only play with my teeth so I can floss. You know. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Floss while I play. <laughs> Very good luck. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Jeff, you you call your big bass the horse. Mr. Horse. Mr. Horse. Sorry, sorry. A correction, correction. Yeah, Mr. Horse. Do you have a name for that? What well, is that? The long black one. The one that you were playing with the. Is it oh, that, that's an, uh, yeah, that's a Steinberger uh, upright electric. Yeah, okay. that I play with the other band. Excuse my but, ignorance. But, but uh, Mr. Horse is um, 1950s Czechoslovakian wow. double bass. Um, it's appropriate that he's a horse. He's a, he's a work horse. Yeah. Uh, I throw him around. He gets broken. Put him back together. Stronger. So he's bulletproof now. Yeah. Um, but um, I don't know. It just it's it's a bass that you know some some instruments you feel precious with and you don't mm -hmm. want to chip them and you don't want to you know. But with this one, it just seems to like being thrown around and having some rough treatment. It's just yeah. I don't know if it's a sadistic thing. Or what, <laughs> They're out there. So. Yeah. Some things are just like that. Some things are just like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, Mr. Horse is um, pretty much the, the fourth member of the band, really. Yeah. That's awesome. Now, they're about to go on stage for Kansas, um, raising money for cancer, mind you. Um, and just thought we would quickly touch on their upcoming um, single, recording. Album. Al album, album. Guys, can yeah. you tell us about that? Well, uh, again, like I said, Al, Al writes all the music. Um, we released an, an EP earlier, um, but the album is the newer stuff we feel is more indicative of what we do and um, and shows uh, shows a development in the music um, from when we started to where we are now. Um, we're going to release it at the beach shop, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah, that's the plan. Yeah. Cool. So from the beach shop onwards, it's um, available. Yeah. Will you will you be selling copies of it there? We will have it available at the beach shop, and then uh, on our um, from our Facebook page, Recliner Rock right. on Facebook. Um, we don't have a current um, website, but we will have soon um, the ReclinerRockers.co.nz. Nice, nice. And it'll be available there too. So. Awesome. And do you guys have any plans to um, tee up with iTunes or anything and sell your? Um, sell yeah, your... we're thinking about it. We haven't really looked into that. Yeah. Uh, we're thinking about it, yeah. Good, yeah. good, good to know. Well, I hope you do. And last question. When listening to certain songs, punters get goosebumps. Which song would you say that you guys get goosebumps singing or listening to? Um, well, it doesn't happen as often as I'd like it to. Um, occasionally I've, I've got a, that sort of feeling that we're doing something right and uh, all the stars are aligned when doing uh, heard it on the radio and the energy back from the audience and the energy from the band is um, coalescing and everything's happening and everything feels good and feels right you know um, I wish it happened more often but uh, but it's a great feeling when it does happen well Al's a, Al does all the songwriting and um, oh. and they're just good songs yeah um, I always get a buzz when we're doing our own music and watching the, the reaction from the crowd. Um, unique in, in this band, really, that the, the covers don't work as well as the originals in this band. The originals is what people like. I bet, and, yeah. And I, th I think that's unique, and I think that's really good. Because um, well, it's heartfelt to you guys. Yeah. 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 Now, goose, as far as goosebumps go, <laughs> you... <laughs> I was just putting that word out there. I mean, yeah. it, it can... Get horse bumps. Get horse bumps. <laughs> but, um, yeah. But uh, yeah, any any of um, Al's original music when we play it and it goes down well and we and we know we've played it well, yeah. that's when that feeling kicks in. Yeah. And you can't describe it. And the Just crowds respond to it as well. Yeah. Even look, but to be honest, the, the crowd usually does um, respond well to the songs. But even if there was one person in the audience having a blast that it, that it really touched. Yeah. And we played it well. That it that's was, it's the same feeling. Yeah. Spoken mm. like a true artist. Well, thanks so much, guys. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time and um, I'm sure we'll see you out there.